Hi team! With your research article just right around the corner, I wanted to make sure that you guys had some good references to be able to use for your graphs and for your stats. And so I have included this Excel file in the description so you can open it up and you can follow along. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the experimental setup just because when you create your own Excel sheet, you should have in mind what the experimental setup was, what you did, what you saw, and that will help you make your Excel spreadsheet and then help you determine if the graph that you get at the end is actually conveying the story that you want it to tell. So for us, our experiment is done on the Great Terrible Dragon, and it's because this is an agricultural pest because it breathes fire and crops are flammable. And so farmers don't like that the dragon keeps burning their crops down, so the farmers ask the scientists to fix the problem. And scientists didn't want to kill the dragons, and so the scientists created three different solutions, including ammonium solution, a potassium solution, and a sodium solution to try and suppress the fire breath of the dragon. And so they mixed the different solutions with cattle for bait and then waited until the dragons ate the cattle and the scientists took the number of fire breaths that the dragon breathed for the rest of the day. And so you'll see that I have my data set up right here and I have my three different solutions and my five different trials and I have the number of fire breaths that each dragon breathed each under each different solution. So the first thing I need to do to be able to graph is to get a snapshot picture of what happened for each of the different solutions. You don't want to have an individual bar for each trial for each solution. You just want a big snapshot picture and you do that by taking the average of your trials. And to take the average of your trials we need to insert a function. And to insert a function we need to put in an equal sign because that tells Excel that it needs to start running a function now. And the average function is in the ribbon which is this big pinkish grayish thing and next to the text box, there's this little button that says f of x, and that's your insert function button. And so you'll click that, and I have used average recently, and this is my like recently used button. If average isn't here for you, you can just go type it in. And everything that's related to averages shows up in this box. Average is just the first one. And you hit OK. And instead of hitting each, instead of inputting each number individually, Excel is smart enough that if you just put in a range for the first number, it'll calculate it for you. So you'll just clear out what Excel thinks it should have, and then you highlight your data, and you can tell that it already knows each of the different fine numbers that we put in, and then you hit OK. And then Excel spits out your average. The thing that you can do instead of having to redo that whole setup each time is to take your cursor that's normally a white filled in plus sign and put it in the corner of your highlighted function box and click and drag it across. And this tells Excel to take that function that we just told it to run but apply the next set of data to it. So you'll see if I click on the ammonium average, it says average of E11 to E15, which is this column. And if I go to the potassium one, you'll see that the average has already filled in to have uh, the data from F11 to F15. And now we can actually build our chart by highlighting your label since Excel is smart enough to fill those in for you and then hitting the control apple or command key on your keyboard and highlighting your averages the command key or the control key or the apple key just tells the computer that you want to highlight two different things that are not next to each other to insert the chart you go back up to the ribbon and next to home is insert and we want to insert a column graph in Excel, the difference between a column and a bar graph is that the columns are vertical and the and bars are a horizontal graph. So we'll just hit the clustered column, which is the first option, and then it shows up. 
if you want to change the color of your different bars, you can go to the design toolbar at the top. If there aren't colors there that you like, you can click on your data series or on one of these big bars, right click on it, go to format data series, go to fill, go to solid fill, and then pick a color and hit close. I should note that you can pick any colors you want, although red-green color blindness is the most common, so you probably shouldn't put those together in the same graph. And now that we have the colors that we want, we now get to label our graph. The series button we don't really need, it's just a legend. And what it means by series is if, for example, if we had run this exact experiment on three different dragons and continued to use the three different solutions, you would probably have colored bars for each of your dragons, and that's what the series says. You can get rid of it because we only have one series because we only have one dragon. To finish labeling the chart, You'll notice that if you click off of the chart, all our chart tools are gone. So if you look for them and you're, you're like, where did they go? You can always just click back on the chart. It highlights your data and all the chart tools come back up. In the chart tools, you want the layout. And then you want axes titles, which is towards the left. And we'll start with the primary horizontal axis. And when you start typing, it won't type in this box. It'll type up in the function bar. Um, but we'll just call this solutions. And then you can do the vertical axis. I like the rotated title. And this is number of fire breaths. And then you can add your chart title. And I like the one that's above the chart. And you want to name your chart something that is recognizable to the reader. And the reader kind of gets an idea of what your chart is saying. So this one will be fire breast suppression after consuming treated cattle. Now that we have the snapshot of the chart, we need to actually put in the symbol for variation, which is our error bars. We are going to calculate our own error bars using standard deviation. And if you're like, hey, Nancy, but like right up there, there's the error bar option. Well, the error bar option isn't particularly good because we aren't going to be using percentage. You can use standard error, but standard error and standard deviation in this option has the same problem where it applies the same standard deviation to each of your trials. And we don't want that because each of our different solutions theoretically will have a different standard deviation. So to make the standard deviation, we will go here and we are going to do another function. So we hit equals again. And then we're going to go back up to the function button. And I've run standard deviation recently, so it's right here. But again, if you can't find it, you can just search for it. And we want the standard deviation that says STDEV. And you hit OK. And then you will enter your data just the same way that we did for the average. And just highlight it. And you hit OK. And then we'll just drag it across. And so this is the standard deviation for each of the different solutions, which basically asks the question, how much did each of your trials vary from the mean? So now we have to apply these different standard deviations to the graph. And you do this by clicking on your chart again, going to layout, going to error bars, more error bar options. You want both the positive and the negative. You do want a cap, but you want to set your custom. I'll state this now. This big box sometimes shows up over your data, but you need to move it out of the way first because when you hit specify value, this little box thinks it's more important than everything else and you can't move the big box behind it anymore. So just make sure it's out of the way. And then we'll get rid of the positive error value and we'll fill in our own by control clicking each of the data points. 
Control clicking tells the computer that you are mapping each bar to each individual you're, you're mapping each error bar to each individual like bar on your graph. Some newer versions of Excel, and I think the Mac version of Excel is smart enough that if you just highlight it, it knows to do that already. Um, but some older versions of Excel aren't quite that smart, and if you just control click all the time, then it always works. And then for the negative error value, you clear that out, and you put these in, and you hit OK, and you hit close. And now we have a perfectly made graph with error bars. So as you can see from our experimental setup, the scientists found that the sodium solution was the most effective at reducing dragon fire breath.